greetings, grand rising to you on this beautiful, beautiful morning. Um, but first, giving all praises to the Most High, our power. And I thank you, Father, for your shy Christ, our oil, and for shedding his precious blood for us. I also would like to thank you, Father, for the Holy Spirit, our Mother, who leads, guides, counsels, and comforts us. I'm coming before you today because there's some things that came to mind. These things have been in my mind for a while and in my heart, and I wanted to relate it to you because I know that uh, a lot of people are going through. Some people don't have jobs. Some people are going through the ills of going to work, having to get up and go to work. Some people are just going through the ills of their spouses or mothers and parents not understanding them and where they're coming from. And this is in regards to those who are in Christ. How are we to handle these situations? Well, rule number one, we are to love those as we love ourselves. Can you honestly say you were doing that? Are you loving those as you love yourself? And have you made that a part of your character, such as our master is Christ? Because truly, if you have the love of Christ, you will love those as you love yourself. Nevertheless, some of the things that we see that's going on as well is there's a lot of flattery going on. There's a form of godliness going on. You know, because these people have a, a, a form of it you know, a prototype of it, look like it, talk like it, but the actions are not there. They deny the power. They deny the power. And you might say, well, what is the power? But well, the power is reaching out and pulling your brother up. Reaching out and pulling your sister up. When, can you be honest? When has been the last time anybody has called you or emailed you about your concern. What do you need? You know? Are you hurt? You know? You see, in the text, we see people who are sick, people who are hurt, people who are blind, people who just lacked. But yet God's disciples and his children were able to manifest those things that they needed to bring about salvation and to bring about healing to people who lacked. Now, another concern that I saw was there's a lot of children out here just, that's just out here doing all kinds of crazy stuff. You don't think the Most High don't see you? He sees everything that you're doing. I think one of the sisters has said that there was a uh, a new gunnery going around. Hey, the most I see every secret thing that you were doing in lockdown. So don't think because COVID don't get you, something else can always get you. Don't think that. Something can always touch you. Especially when you know you're not you're out here causing mischief damaging people's lives and speaking bad on people and I mean we can even get into that you know if you're gonna rebuke a brother or a sister rebuking and cursing is two different things two different things rebuking somebody in love and cursing somebody damning somebody is two different things however there's something I'm gonna read because there was another thing that I saw that was happening with the youth, young men and young women, um, coming into this truth. And when I mean the truth, the coming into the knowledge of God. So let's read because recognition of Clement covers that. It's called How the Fight. Let's see if you can see it. How the Fight Begins. 
It says, but if anyone say, how does it seem right for men to be separated from their parents? I will tell you how, because if they remain with them in error, they would do no good to them, and they would themselves perish with them. It is therefore right, and very right, that he who will be saved be separated from him who will not. Now, why would you think you would say that? Because sometimes, you know, when you're connected to people and they're not equally yoked with you, they'll pull you down. And that's either spirit or natural. You know, it's one of those things where if you want to be a doctor, why would you hang with electricians? Or if you wanted to be an electrician, why would you hang with plumbers? You know, so the saying of birds of the of the same feather flock together, that saying is true. You know, you hang around people you kind of want to build yourself up to be. So, in essence, once you become into the once you come into this truth and come into the knowledge of God, which is the truth, which is the truth of his son, then the separation begins. Hence forth the title, How the Fight Begins. Alright, we're going to move further on. But observe this also, that this separation does not come from those who understand all right. For they wish to be with their relatives, and to do them good, and to teach them better things. Now is that not true? Now that you came into this truth and now that you've got some understanding, you're excited, you're pumped up, you're ready to go, you're ready to run that 220, man, that 440, you're ready to get it. But then, as soon as you get around those people, you see that they do not have the same desire and love that you have for the doctrine. You see that your lifestyle changes, but their lifestyle doesn't. And... It said, for they wish to be with their relatives and to do them good and to teach them better things. So as you do that, you're being rejected. You're being persecuted. The same things that the saints went through. The same things during the inception of Christ. If you know about his um, nativity of when he was young, since his inception. The same thing that took place are taking place now. A separation. And the separation is... One who believes and wants to live the lifestyle and one who just believes because there is some parents who do believe in the truth and they feel that when you come as the truth and that you're changing your lifestyle up, they automatically stamp you with the cult. They're in a cult. That's what they say. Mm -hmm. But I, what, what I would say is that the text says you either be hot or cold. Because anything lukewarm is going to get spewed, spit it out his mouth. He's not even going to deal with that. If you're lukewarm, he's not dealing with you. Not in that way. Alright, so let's move further on. But it is the vice peculiar to ignorance that it will not bear to have near it the light of truth. So see, it's, the, so see, it's something that they didn't catch that's peculiar to them. And that becomes ignorance because they were ignorant to that which was peculiar to them. And they can't bear to understand it. So what do they do? It says, which confutes it. So they confute it. They argue amongst it. So, you know, some brothers, you know, hey man, you know, you talking too smooth, you know, hey man, you know. Well, hey brother, I'm not talking loud. I'm not a loud talker. I don't do all that loud talk. That's not me. You know, or how uh, my uh, elders would say, I'm not a cackler, man. You ain't going to see me around here cackling. All right, so let's go further on. And it says, and therefore that separation originates with them. For those who receive the knowledge of truth, because it is a full of goodness, desire, if it be possible, to share it with all as given by the good God. Yes, even with those who hate and persecute them, for they know that ignorance is the cause of their sin. And I was once there. There was a lot of things that I was ignorant about. A lot of things that I was ignorant about, you know. And to 
the brother that led me to the understanding because I was already doing works in the church and the way he was doing things, it was peculiar to me. But yet, he could understand where I was coming from because he was once there. And that's my cousin. I just want to tell you I thank you and I love you for that, brother. And, you know, God is with you where you are. However, before then, I, I confuted it. I argued against it. But then, that spark happened within my mind. That thought happened within my mind that, well, what if? What if? And as long as that what if is there, that's the spirit telling you, open up that book, get in that word of God, and steady. Because guess what, brothers and sisters? That truth is still there in those 66 books. I don't care what anybody say. That truth is there in those 66 books. All right? So, it says, yes, even with those who hate and persecute them, for they know that ignorance is the cause of their sin. Wherefore, in short, the master himself, when he was being led to the cross by those who knew him not, prayed the Father for his murderers and said, Father, forgive their sin, for they know not what they do. The disciples also, in imitation of the master, even when themselves were suffering in like manner, prayed for their murderers. But if we are taught to pray, even for our murderers and persecutors, how ought we not to bear the persecutions of parents and relations and to pray for their conversion? That was the question, you see? Right here. That was the question. So I mean, now that we think about this, you come into this truth, you're going back home, you're all excited, your parents pull out their Bible on Sunday and they say, baby, you ain't go to church. Why you ain't go to church? And then you start going into the doctrine, you start telling them about all these things you've learned, and now they confute. And now you're in a place of, of, of division amongst your parents. And you can't tell them you don't love them because you want to be around them. But how can you relate to that? Was the question. Because then, now you get in conflict of what Christ did, our master did when he was on the cross and he prayed for the murderers that murdered him, which was our forefathers. One nobody else but them that did it. So how, so if he could pray for his murderers and then you're being all upset about your mother or your father, that you disputed with in regards to uh, the belief of the truth of the gospel. How can you relate to that? Well, we're going to move further on in this, in this reading. Let's go. It says, God to be loved more than parents. You see that? God to be loved more than parents. Then let us consider carefully in the next place what reason we have for loving our parents. For this cause, it is said we love them because they seem to be the authors of our life. It says they seem to be the authors of our life. Are they the authors of our life, brothers and sisters? Truly, are they the authors of our life? So let's move further on. Um, for they do not bestow life, but afford the means of our entering into this life, while the one and the sole author of life is God the Most High. If therefore we would love the author of our life, let us know that it is he that is to be loved. But then it is said, we cannot know him, but then we know and hold an affection. Be it so, you cannot know what, is, what God is, but you can very easily know what God is not. For how can any man fail to know that wood or stone or brass or other such matter. It is it is not God, but if you will not give your mind to consider the things which you might easily apprehend, it is certain that you are hindered in the knowledge of God, not by impossibility, but by indolence. For if you had wished it, 
even from these useless images, you might have been set on the way of understanding. So you see what he's saying? He's saying, how are you going to be able to get the understanding of something spiritual in, in regards to God's words when you can't even understand those things that are natural? See, people want to go after mysteries. And this is what I see, too, is the problem. You're going after mysteries. And I'm just being honest. You're going off. And I'm not even going to say you're going off. You're just not even talking about Christ. You're not talking about salvation. Because how can the mysteries reconcile someone back to God? How can mysteries deliver salvation unto unbelievers? You have to teach them the law. You have to teach them the basic foundation of things. Or maybe you don't teach the basic basic foundation of things because you don't understand the basic foundation or maybe you just seem like you know what but people don't want to hear it. it's just repetitious it's over and over and over well how does a child learn how to walk if he don't get up and walk over and over and over that's important repetition is important now we're going to read and read this one last thing and it's called the earth made for men. Everything is in its order. For it is certain that these images are made with iron tools. But iron is wrought by fire, which fire is extinguished by water. But water is moved by spirit. Now this you know it to be true. Water is moved by spirit. Why? It's because your body's made up of water. And what's and what is within this flesh? The spirit. But water is moved by spirit, and spirit has its beginning from God. For thus said the prophet Moses, In the beginning God made the heaven and the earth. But the earth was invisible and unarranged, and darkness was over the deep. And the spirit of God, the Most High, was upon the waters. Which spirit, like the Creator's hand, by command of God, separated light from darkness. And after that invisible heaven produced this visible one, that he might make the higher places a habitation for angels and the lower for men. For your sake, therefore, by command of God, the water which was upon the face of the earth withdrew, that the earth might produce fruits for you. And into the earth also he inserted veins of moisture, that fountains and rivers might flow forth from it, for you for your sake it was commanded to bring forth living creatures and all things which could serve for your use and pleasure is it not for you that the winds blow that the earth conceiving by them may bring forth fruits is it not for you that the showers fall and the seasons change is it not for you that the sun rises and sets and the moon undergoes her changes. For you, the sea offers its service, that all things may be subject to you. Ungrateful as you are, for all these things shall there not be a righteous punishment. For all these things shall there not be a righteous punishment of vengeance, because beyond all else you are ignorant of the bestower of all these things, whom you ought to acknowledge and reverence above all. So once again in that simple teaching, simple, simple, quick repetition of teaching. Understand yourself. Understand who you are. Because clearly if, 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 you can't understand people, even when they talk about you. I know there's been people who've been talking about me. I go to your channels and hear you talking about some of the lessons that the Most High has given me. And then you tell your hundred or two, three, four, five hundred viewers and followers. Nevertheless, that's accounted to them as sin. And you. Why? It's because you're talking about me. You're backbiting you're being a worker of iniquity. You're causing mischief. 
but yet the same voice and the same tongue that you give power to to speak about other people, guess what? There's a thousand more talking about you. And rightfully so, because you're not doing what's right. But that's another story. So nevertheless, brothers and sisters, what's peculiar, what is so peculiar about loving someone who loves you back? What's so peculiar about hitting someone who hits you back? What's so peculiar about returning something who someone gives to you? There's nothing peculiar about that. These are all the things that they do in the world. But what is peculiar is that when you're weak, and the Most High makes you strong. What is peculiar is when people speak ill will against you, you love on them back. And you rebuke them in love as well. So nevertheless, this is just a short, quick lesson. A short, quick reading. My little two-piece from me to you. To let you know that, you know, during your morning, I pray that you have a blessed and prosperous day. I pray that the Most High is uh, speaking with you, guiding you, and directing you. And I pray that the Holy Spirit comforts you if you are going through some things with your parents in regards to the truth. And I pray that the Most High makes you sensitive to uh, their needs as well. Because ultimately, you love them. And if you love them, guess what? You should be there and be able to speak with them. So, just giving all the honor and praise to the Most High, our power. And I thank you, Father, for your shy Christ, our oil, and for shedding his precious blood for us. I also would like to thank you, Father, for the Holy Spirit, our Mother, who leads, guides, counsels, and comforts us. There is more word. Blessings and peace.